Woohoo! Hey everybody! What's up? Welcome back! Welcome back, Scott. Thank you. It's good to be back. I'm not even giving you guys excuses anymore. It is what it is. I get out here when I can and I do what I can and I'm a little disappointed anyway because I thought you guys had my back but you don't. So what I mean by that is if you remember in the last video uh, when I started putting this engine back together and I put the pistons in and I said that I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos on how to put the pistons in and there's a little chamfer on the side and on bank one that chamfer went forward and on bank two that chamfer went backward I'll put a little clip in here right here of what I'm talking about just in case you don't remember apparently on an LS engine when you're putting the pistons in if they're the stock you know if you're using the stock pistons there's a I'll call it a witness mark but there's a, a dimple right here on the piston and on bank one so pistons one three five and seven that dot is supposed to correlate to i don't know if you guys can see it i can't see it because i'm blind as a bat but there's a large chamfer right here i don't know if you guys can see that flat edge chamfer and that chamfer on that first bank one three five and seven is supposed to face forward towards the front of the engine on pistons two four six and eight the second bank that's supposed to go backwards so towards the back of the engine um i, I did watch that video but i didn't take into account that he was talking about aftermarket pistons and rods and not the factory pistons and rods so i actually had bank one was in right with this little dot facing forward but i had bank two with this little dot facing it was over here on all four of these cylinders uh after watching some more YouTube videos and doing some more research I realized that on the factory pistons and rods that dot on both banks will face forward and nobody caught it or I don't know maybe they did and they want to watch me blow this thing up I don't know um, but I flipped them all around so now that little dot on all the factory pistons is facing forward on the engine uh, instead of half forward, half backwards. So now that we have that part down, I'm going to flip this engine over and we have to cut the windage tray in order to put the oil pan on. All right, we got the engine flipped around. We have the windage tray on and there's a hundred thousand videos on YouTube about cutting this windage tray and why you have to do it uh, especially if you're changing the oil pan so I have a LS1 oil pan because uh, the uh, factory one off the trailblazer is not going to fit in this car so with the LS1 oil pan I believe it's you know you can see that black line that much of this windage tray has to get cut off, otherwise the oil pan doesn't sit flat here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna set you up, maybe speed it up, do a little timeline, whatever. I'm gonna try and cut this windage tray using a multi-tool uh, and we'll see how it goes. Everybody that I've seen do it uses a cutoff wheel. I don't have a cutoff wheel and I don't wanna go right now and get one. Uh, I'd like to just try and do this the hard way. So I'll get to cutting this windage tray and we'll see where we go.
Well, that went better than I thought it would. How are we going to have chaos if things start going well on this build? I think it actually uh, actually fits now. Oh, I'm up here. I'm a bad cameraman. I'm a bad filmer. I'm a bad engine mill. I suck at everything. But oh well, how do you learn? How do you learn if you don't do? So I just jump in two feet and do. And sometimes I succeed, sometimes I fail. That is life. I've been walking around this shop, my whole barn really, for about five minutes looking for my little wonder wheel. And it occurred to me that I had put some cabinets in here and I probably put it away. So I found my wonder wheel. Now if you're wondering why I call it a wonder wheel. It's because I wonder how it can grind anything with a bad motor. It'll take some time, but I think it'll get the job done. The wonder wheel. See what I mean? The trick is going to be if I have to cut this anymore to make the pickup tube fit. So it's occurred to me you guys don't really know me. So <clears throat> obviously, my name is Scott. I'm 50 years old. I know I don't look it. Thanks everybody. I uh, married. I have two children. 23 and 17. I've been married since 1994 to my basically junior high sweetheart. We met when I was 15 and she was almost 13. We've been together ever since. I'm going to have to look up a torque spec on these bolts because I'm not really sure. Uh, my occupation is a... Well, they call it a sound and communications technician, but I don't do any sound and very little communications. So basically, I'm a low voltage electrician or a specialty electrician, and I'm 
nice set certified and fire alarm which is a national certification and it's a another specialty license above and beyond the specialty electrical license I've been doing that for just over 18 years and before that I was a mobile electronics certified car audio installer for a fairly large audio company called car toys I did that for about 11 years managed a shop before the politics got too great at the place and I uh, thought it in my best interest to move on um, what else can I tell you about me do you guys watch Rain Man Ray he is a badass mechanic and if you watch Rain Man Ray you'll know what those are let me hit this Wobbly bits and nice and shiny. Ray is top notch when it comes to knowing his way around a vehicle. I tell you what, if you guys haven't watched him, check out his channel, Rain Man Ray Repair. Rain Man Ray's Repairs. He's great. He does long form content. Very little editing, um, but it's it's captivating. Let's see where we go from here. I don't think I'm gonna actually bolt this on. I mean, obviously there's not even a gasket. Yeah, see there? Let's see, I don't know if you guys can see that. So now that I put the uh, pickup tube on, there's a gap. Gapification. And that's not, not really gonna work for me or anybody. So, oh, you guys are back here still, see? My camera placement is freaking awful. I'm working on it, guys. I only have like, I don't know, 50 videos out over the many hundreds of years I've been doing YouTube videos. <clears throat> Rain Man Ray tries to do an upload every day. I seem like I try to do an upload every month <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm. I don't know I don't know what to do here this has to be able to sit down it seems to be hitting right there so Got a pen around here somewhere. A little sharpie. Seems to be hitting right there. One of Ray's sayings, I love my job so much, I do it twice. So, that seems to apply in this scenario. I'm gonna whip this thing off and give her another freaking zap with the multi-tool.
Just Swiss cheese this windage tray all up and see what happens. I think it depends on what oil pan and pickup tube you actually order or go with. Depends on how much of this windage tray has to be cut. Because I've seen people like have to notch them up in here and stuff. So I just checked that red light just to make sure I'm recording. I got a bad habit of not pressing the record button and then I just go to town and think that I'm filming something and I'm not. And I'm really actually terrible at this YouTube thing. But whatever. Okay, we got the windage tray cut down and put on and the oil pickup tube is on. Now I don't think I can put the oil pan on yet because as you can see I haven't put the oil pump on and I really think it's going to be a pain in the butt to put the oil pump on and bolt the pickup tube to it if the oil pan is on. So I'm going to skip that part for now. What I would like to do is clean up the what you may call it the loper uh, the camshaft I want to clean up the cam and see if I can't get that installed now I'm really nervous about doing this so stick with me guys and with your support your moral support I think I can do it so let's grab that cam and get it cleaned up so apparently a couple different ways that you can tell that your camshaft is an original is well I won't even say especially but if ordering it from Elgin it doesn't come in a bag so it's just raw in the box you do get this little paper that talks about the quality and performance and durability and all that stuff. And then one of the things that I noticed straight off the bat was there's a, this brown paint-like mark and a white paint-like mark. Now, apparently Elgin does that from the factory as some kind of quality control thing. Um, and if they're on there and your cam is from Elgin and it doesn't come shipped in a bag, then that's a legit, authentic Elgin camshaft. So what I want to do is get these paint marks cleaned off and the, actually the entire cam cleaned off uh, before we install it. O'Reilly's six ninety nine. O'Reilly's four nineteen. In the interest of not boring you guys to death with this, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back. Took about I don't know. 3.42 minutes to get that stuff off of there. It's all cleaned off now. And something. I got something right there. I sprayed down the entire cam with brake clean and I think we're ready to lube it up and slap her in the hole. I'm getting this all lubed up with some assembly lube. Just 
Just all nice and sticky like. Here goes nothing. Things definitely come out easier than they go in. Now we have a new cam thrust plate. Apparently you don't want to reuse the original one. And these are fairly cheap anyway. All right, so these camshaft retaining bolts go to 18 foot-pounds So we set our Lexivon torque wrench to 18 foot-pounds And we'll Slap the business to him Almost had that one at 18 by hand. Oh, two of them. All right, there we go. 18 foot pounds. Okay, folks. Now I think we're going to do this timing set. Apparently, All you have to do is Can you guys see? Can you see? Let's bring you down here a little. <clears throat> so Apparently, all you have to do is make sure that cylinder one is top dead center, which puts this mark, if you can see that, straight up, and then there's this mark on the timing gear, and you just align those two marks. So let me get this camera set up in a better position so I can have both hands and we'll see if I can do this. Okay, so I've turned the cam so that that dot on the cam gear will line up, but I'm just kind of going over this chain just giving a, a once over to see if there's any 
marks on this thing. I don't I don't think there is and I don't recall anybody ever saying that there was. So we're just gonna we're just gonna give it a whirl. <clears throat> I've got, right, I'm just gonna put the bolts in my pocket. And this goes something like, that doesn't, that doesn't quite feel right. Doesn't quite look right. I think this chain needs to move. But if it moves that way, This is definitely harder than it looks. Did that just, did that just fall right on there? Let's see. Let's see if we can get these three bolts in here without a problem. Because it looks like... I mean, it... I don't know. It doesn't quite look right. This dot is right here, and this dot's over here. Does this have to... It doesn't have any where to go because you have that locating pin. So let's just... There's one. There's two, went in with no problem. There's three, went in with no problem. That thing seems like it's on there. It seems kind of loose.
And I don't remember there being, you know, like some vehicles have a tensioner. I don't remember there being a tensioner on this one. Well, let me grab a ratchet or the the torquifier and we'll get these torqued down. <laughs> nope. It's like those suckers are 10 millimeter. And then it calls for 26 foot pound of torque. Well, thoughts is that. The dots are lined up. Kind of tightened up a little bit. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. All right, let's try and see what happens when we spin this baby. She's spinning. And top dead center again. Well guys, this video has run fairly long and I'm to the point now where I want to install the lifters. Um, that's not going to happen today. I just checked out the instructions and it said you have to, <coughs> excuse me, you have to uh, inspect them for damage, clean them, and soak them in oil. Uh, they're Brian Tooley Racing LS7 lifters. So we're going to save that for another video. Uh, we got quite a bit done today. I had to switch those pistons like I said earlier. And uh, got the windage tray cut down and the timing set on and the cam installed. So I'm pretty pleased. I'm going to wrap this video up and I'm going to wrap the engine up in a bag like I've been doing. And next video, we will do the lifters and maybe like the rear main seal and the front cover, start maybe looking at doing some accessories on here. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. I super appreciate it. If you liked this video, leave a like. If you haven't yet and you would want to, Click that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And drop me a comment, guys. I want to kind of get to know my audience a little bit. Um, no pressure, of course, but really pressure. Like, let's, let's, let's comment, man. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, I don't care. I try to answer every single comment, and it's really not hard right now because I only get a couple. But... Um, Flood me. 
See if I can keep up with you guys. Again, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, share, comment. Let's get to know each other a bit, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you in the next one. Peace, and I'm out.